Hi there, welcome to this last video. Here we are going to address a little bit plotting. So assuming that we all know how to use uh, foil and we get all the output files, what we're going to do here, we're going to show you an alternative you know, or one action to do uh, plotting. So stuff like this, your your polars and curves, two curves together, changing axis. So we're going to do this using uh, Python, I'm going to show you this. But remember that for your homework, you can use uh, any software, any plotting software, or even Excel, or you can take this screen screenshot for uh, Excel. I don't care, but let's do some things a little bit more professional. So the, first, the important thing that let's say, uh, I'm assuming that we have all this data. So the data that we're going to deal with is the airfall coordinate. So just to show you how to plot the airfall, it's a straightforward X, Y, but probably will be important to have a uh, proportional aspect rate to stuff like that. Then the outputs, okay? So you will have the outputs and we're going to use two, two out outputs, okay? So first, the traditional polar. So see that we have CLCD, and then we're going to plot also CM, but also if you want, you can get CDP, pressure drag, and also the free skin friction drag, that is this minus this. And you can also plot a uh, transition, it's up to you. You are going just to plot this, the coefficient, CLCD, CM, in function is alpha. And also we're going to plot, uh, pressure coefficient, okay? So remember that we can save that one. So I save it for one angle, okay? Here you have alpha zero with this Reynolds. And see here that you have the X coordinate and the values, X, Y coordinate and CP value, okay? So in theory also you can get the airfall coordinates for here, okay? But what is interesting that when you save this data out of uh, X fold, you're going to get like this, the whole airfoil and the distribution. But if you want to do the plotting like in a for splitting things like top and bottom surface, it might be a good idea to manipulate your data, the output data. So you see here that ID already that manipulation here, I will open those files. So I split it, I know what is my coordinate. So the top, the, the top surface goes from training edge one up to the leading edge and see that I know that I stop it here, I get my coefficient there, and the same from the bottom goes for us. So you can do this manually, but also you can do it using your program, okay? You can use some logic and conditioning to, to know where to stop, but I will do it in this way, let's say the easiest way or the brutal way, not very elegant. Okay, so as I say, in CP also you have airfall coordinates, okay? So maybe we don't need to, to open that other, other file, but just to show you, so see that pretty much is the same coordinates that you have. So let's access this data using Python, the alternative that I show you. By the way, if you don't have Python, I recommend to use this version. It's a cold Anaconda Python. It's very powerful. And you have it for all operating systems, Mac, Windows, and, and Linux and also other operating operating system. So as you go here, individual, here you can download, okay? According to your operating system. So here you have the major versions, major versions. So it's a very powerful tool, it's free. So I recommend it also, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's important skill, okay? So you learn a little bit. So the first plot here, I'm not going into details, okay? So this is Python, but we're going, uh, but I'm using something that is called a Python notebook. Okay, so I can program, you no, know, I can get my Python Python scripts in the in the web browser. Okay, it's very handy. Okay, but you can do it also in a traditional uh, text file. Okay, so in your text file, you write your commands and then you execute execute Python. But for some reason, I like it here. So these are standard commands that you have here. I'm not going to go into details. And we're using this library, these two libraries, matplotlib and numpy, okay? So as you go in the internet, again, you, you're going to find a lot of information how to use that one. So I'm not going into many details, it will be up to you to look for things, but it's very well documented. Numpy is also another interesting library, okay? So as you go in the internet, you will find information. This is for array manipulation. And there is another one, scipy, scipy very powerful also. So here you have documentation tutorial to do it. So I'm not going into details. So basically what we're doing here, okay, uh, just calling the, li the library what I want to use in the library. And something important to execute, these are cells that you have 
here in this notebook. To execute this, these cells, you need to press Shift Enter and you execute. See that you're executing, okay, Shift Enter. Also here, you go into cell and see that you can press Run All and it will roll, run everything, okay? So always look at the options of Run All or you can get a single cell here, okay? So you have a few options there. For the purposes here, from time to time, I will do Shift Enter or Run All, as so I want to show you the immediate script. I here at the end also showing you the specific versions that I'm using. So the first plot is the common one, this one. So see that here, CLCD, this is the polar plot and very standard one. So see that we're put, putting grids. So here you have some comments how to enable disable grids, okay? So if you want to play around with this script, for instance, I'm plotting this one, let me Comment that one the comments here are using hashtag or numeral or pound whatever you call it see that now I'm using so the important thing is that I'm reading my data So here when you read in data you need to give the relative path So I have an script and in the same directory I have this information Okay, so it's a relative path and see that I have this option is keeping the first 12 row rows uh, and wise you open that file Okay, any of this. See that you have 12 rows there that you can escape. Okay, so you can manipulate everything when reading. So see that you read, read this data and you call it data. This is your array. So you're going to access columns here now. So it will be columns 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you just choose which one you want to plot. Okay, and the same for the airfoil. Okay, so in the airfoil, skipping just one row. And look at that here, we go to plot and see that we're reading this array data and just accessing everything, vertical column of the array, let's say, uh, let's say all, all, all lines, uh, column zero, all lines, column one. Okay, so we know that column zero is alpha, CL. And this is what we are plotting. So to proceed now, enter and see that now you have your data be careful that you need to change the names in the access so here also you have how to give different names you can put latex in in python okay so there is no problem to add symbols on that sense okay so this is how you get cl okay so it's very handy okay very easy to use here you have comments to play font size and that stuff if you want to fade the fee save the figure this one so just erase this comment we'll save it with this resolution there are many formats and send it again and in the directory where you have that python script okay in my case see that i'm running in this directory i have everything you have your file there and then you can do your <clears throat> your post processing and have your figures just nice nice figure okay so this is the single one okay so you can do it for cl cd c alpha but you can do more elaborate stuff so for instance the next one that i want to show you is this one so look at it in this one we're plotting two <coughs> two two, two, <coughs> two coefficients in one plot okay so here we're using a common access here so probably it's not a good idea because maybe this one will be way much larger than the other it's difficult to read but to do it see that you access in the same way the data see that the columns are now column two one and change the name and nothing changed the rest is the same but to make sense a little bit more elegant we can have different access and see that we have the legend here also you can enable legend there so see that in this auction now we have two access so the left axis CL, right axis to CD. Okay, so this is much better. And here you always you have alpha. So here you have the explanation how to do that. So it's a little bit tricky, but see that the, the, the thing here is that you need to create a second axis. Okay, so you, this is an auction that you declare your plot. Okay, and see that we're having a plot in one axis and then another plot in another axis. So it's twin X to replicate that one. So now that you have the second axis, so see that the first plot is the blue line, see that you can assign colors. It is using this X axis, but it's the one to access now the second axis. See that you call it AX2, and then you plot the drag or whatever you want in the other one. And now you have different scales. So to give names and bounds to your domain, you will need to access the specific axis. So see that you have axis one and two, and see here that this is what we're doing, bounds, plot grid, legend, 
Okay, so it's a little bit tricky to plot the legend in this case, but there, this is basically a template, and that's all. And then tick marks, if you want to add this tick marks so that you have it there. So this is a little bit more elegant. I like this one more, but you can do even more stuff you now. So now let me uh, I'll show you also here is that some array manipulations to extract value. So remember that you, you, we have this data, the, the, this, this array. So it's the data array. Okay, so see that if I do like this, it's showing me all the data that you have in that column. As you go to the other column, you have your data in those columns. You don't put anything, it's, or okay, let me put like this. It will give you everything that you have in that array. So you can manipulate, as you can see, these arrays you can manipulate it. So for instance, let's say that I want to find the, let's say the value, the maximum here, CL max. I can go like this, maximum value in column one. I know that column one is CL. So it will give me the maximum value that you have in that array, so see that? As this is the, as that, you have that value. Okay, then here you have a stuff minor elaborated. So in this case, I find I want to find the index where the value is equal to zero. Okay, so basically I want to find the index when alpha is zero, and then I will interrogate my array to know what is the CL value. So see that here, you do like this, you save that value in X, and actually it's print X. So it's telling me that is the value is 10. And I know that in position 10 of my array, so as you go here, you will have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this will be 10. Okay, here you have that, and then you can get that value, okay? So it seems complicated, and I'm probably going to try to overcomplicate things. It might be an easier way, I know there are easier way, but just to show you, okay, the basic stuff. And then there is something interesting. For instance, for, for us, I mentioned that it's very important to know the angle when CL is zero, okay, CL zero. So that, that angle sometimes is not easy to get from this plot, we can get it right ahead for the next one. So we, what we can do here is just, we can create, so these are discrete values, okay? So what you can do here is just compute the intersection of these two points with this one. It's a little bit tricky. So to do things a little bit more automatic, we can create an interpolation function and then we can kind of find the roots of that one with this axis. This is that. So this is what I'm doing here. So see that now we're using this new library, uh, SciPy, using this interpolate. And see that what I'm doing here is creating an interpolation function using these data sets, okay? Zero and one, AOA and CL. And then I do the opposite one, okay? This is CL and AOA, okay? So I have two interpolation functions. Then I create here an array in X, okay? That goes from minus 10 to 25. So this values needs to be the same bounds that you have that you are using for interpolate your data. And see that I have 100,000, 10,000 values or to use that one. And then I put it here and you have your new function. So X new, Y new is your new function, interpolated function. And just to show you that here, I'm plotting that one. Interpolate is the continuous line with the original data. And you see perfect fit. But the interesting that this f in f in one two this is a actual function interpolation function that you can interrogate to get that intersection so for instance is i get f in two and i say f f in two zero means give me the value when cl is zero it's telling me that when cl is zero you have this angle of attack minus 3.13 okay so this is how you interrogate the data you can do more stuff okay so here i show you the basic okay but we know that they, that information but why we do we want that in in, in here maplotlib because we can also add annotations here so for instance see that then is you want to have your nice plot and annotate maybe you would like to know these values okay so you can get right ahead those values here using this function. So see that it's exactly the same, but here's how we annotate. Okay, it's pretty much the same as the previous one, the first case, and but but with annotation. Okay, so see the annotation, you give the values, okay, 0, 0, 3, and this one, okay, so see, and this one also, and then also you give a position of the label. So you can do more elegant stuff. So as you see, I just show you this basic, it's just up to you to do these plots, okay? So these are these polars, and let me show you a more general one, I really like. 
this one this is the one i call it the extended polar okay so i see that we have we, you can have many plots here okay but this is your doing a report it will be figure as the figure but you can concentrate everything put everything in one single plot which is this one the extended one so see that in this one we have all the information leaf coefficient drag coefficient moment coefficient and the polar pay attention to the color for the axis okay so the polar correspond to this axis and leaf here so it's the polar clcd so you look at this one so you're going to check for for drag see that the drag this axis moment this axis so it's, this one is very handy you have everything in one plot it, it's relatively easy to read okay so here you can identify all that information this is a little bit tricky to do so see that it's a long script okay not going into details but you will understand it easy but the idea here is that see that you need to create several axes so see that we have twin two that is this one and then a twin three which is this one and then you shift it a little bit so here you have all the steps how, how to do this but this is a template okay that you can use and you see that here this is reading the data coming from exploit exactly as it comes from exploit it works so see that in this case i'm reading just i generated my polar just read that out of the box and you can do this plot okay so then if you want to save it you have it here and the last plot that i want to show you is about cp okay so these are our polars but then we have this cp distribution also you can have the friction coefficient distribution all that stuff that we saw in the video i'm just going to show you the cp so it's the, it's the same okay so remember that now we need to read the cp data okay so you should have that in your outbox here cp and then we split it in bottom and top okay so see that we have it there we're reading the other data, but we're not going to use now the other data. The airfall, maybe. So the first plot is this one, just to plot the airfall. Okay, so see that we're accessing this data. But what is important here is this auction. Is the aspect rate to SQL. So if I disa disable this auction, okay, let me run everything. Okay. It's loading everything. And let me now, I come on this one enter see that it's not proportional so it's right this is the right re re geometry but for let's say plotting purposes it's better to have your axis now proportional which by the way i disabled the axis so see that plt axis off uh, you come in there or put it to on and you have the axis there okay it's the same if you put it here on nothing change okay chief enter remember so if i go here Equal see that now this is proportional this axis okay so it's up to you okay it doesn't matter but yeah it to me seems visually attractive it's better to have everything proportional okay so this is your airfall and then in the plot next plot see that this is CP distribution okay so we're reading CP we're re reading the, the whole data in the airfall we are not accessing now the top bottom uh, surfaces okay but see that the plot is pretty much the same okay nothing changed you have your axis okay okay see that we i didn't put any grid lines okay later we see we keep reading here and you see more elaborated so for instance here we have subplots okay we have a plot one and a plot two and a sub subplot here is this one so it's very cool very nice so you have your cp here and your airfoil down here in the bottom if you don't want to see for instance See that here we have the axis now the box if you don't want to see the box just go here and have this option now you you can turn off that box okay but what is important remember here that you need to turn off the the right box or the, the right option so this one is axis now it's everything okay i think it should work okay so see that switch off all the axis okay but sometimes you might want to just turn off one axis and you just say it here okay and this one is everything but also you can have the individual access there okay so let me put it like this then this one is a little bit more elaborated or not more elaborated but what i'm doing here is just putting the airfall in the same plot with cp and see that now we have twin axes here so see that in this one is the airfall thickness it is proportional here is cp distribution with the grid line so relatively easy okay in the same way we're not using sub plus us but here you see that we create the second vertical axis the right one and then you choose where to plot so see that we're plotting here left axis then you plot in the right axis the airfoil put it to pro uh, equal aspect ratio and give legends and tick marks and that stuff and this is this is all 
pretty it's a pretty nice okay uh, here that see that there is some transparency here you have that alpha okay the transparency but again remember you have the help okay so I'm not going into details and the final one is this one is another very elaborated one so pretty much the same but see that now we access the data top and bottom so see that now we add colors that like in a egg fold and you can do the same with the air fold you can access the air fold data and give it different colors it's up to you but yeah i think it's okay like this there is some transparency and see that we have two axes and now pay attention that the cp axis is inverted so so far we have it like this Okay, but as I may say in the, during the lecture, it's very important to pay attention to this axis and sometimes for better, to understand better, just this is a, let's say, ca kind of a common practice now when plotting this CP in Air Force, just put the invert in this axis, invert this axis, and you have it like this, okay? So to do this axis inversion, this is a very simple command. Okay, so as you go here, I want to invert which axis this one because we have double axis and see that it's all Invert. So, so come on that one, see that you have it like this. Okay, but let me go back. And that's all, okay? So your colors, let's see that are also adding the minor ticks, okay? So here you have how to plot minors and major ticks, how to add grid lines, everything in your plot, okay? So it's a little bit more elaborated, you can read it very easy. And see also here you can add legends, okay? So you want to point out something here in your plot. And again here, these are the versions that we're, we're using. So this is all, okay, basic basic plotting, okay? In the video description, you will have the link to download these scripts, the data, you already have it, but also in the in the same place that you download that, uh, you can download the, 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 this exactly same data, but the data as it is coming from Xflux, uh, Xfoil, you can use it here. So all these scripts are located in, in GitHub, okay? This is something uh, to just to save you now this small program, so you will have the link there. So see that here you have your scripts, you can download everything, and you have the data just in case. What is cool about this also is you can click here and it will show you the script, okay? You are not going to be able to run this script, but it's just going to show you here what you have, okay, and you can then you can do copy and paste to your computer, okay. So just check the video description, you have that, and if in case that you don't have the data that you already have, also here you have all the air force and everything. Okay, so that's all, okay, thank you very much for your attention, okay, see you next time, bye.